It's now time to return to the crisis in Afghanistan. I promised earlier on that we would be treating you to the highest profile interview this network has ever obtained, which is why it's slightly galling that I'm not the one conducting it. I was going to, but our centrist correspondent and enthusiastic new Labour superfan Joanne Gordon made such a pain in the arse of herself that I had no choice but to let her do it instead. So without further ado, we hand over now to Joanne. Thanks, Sam. Oh my god, I can't believe this is actually happening, but it is, and it's me, and I'm doing it, and I... Oh gosh, I can't breathe! Collect yourself, Gordon, I... uh... (sighs) (sighs) Calm seas, beige paint, skimmed milk. Calm seas, beige paint, skimmed milk. Okay. Okay, I think I've got it. Sorry, everyone, it's just... Well, as you all know, I'm a passionate centrist and... Ah, this is just such a big moment for me! Ladies and gentlemen, here today to talk to little old me and share his views about the crisis in Afghanistan, it's Tony fucking Blair! Yes, hello. Thank you for having me, Joanne. Oh, he said my name! He said my name! He said my fucking name! Yes, quite. It's always nice to meet a fan. Reminds me of 1997. Oh, and I am a fan. I really am. I love everything about you. From education, 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 to the Shore Start Centres, to peace in Northern Ireland. Yes, yes, to actually winning elections. Although, I don't like to mention it. Yes, of course, but also the National Minimum Wage, the Civil Partnership Act, and, uh, and... uh, It's all right. You can say it. This is a safe space. To, um... Uh... The war in Iraq. Um... Sorry, did you have a question? Oh, thank God I was holding my breath for so long that I thought I was going to pass out. (laughs) Yes, yes, of course I do. Um, I suppose the big question everyone wants to know is... What you think of all this? Well, thank you for asking, Joanne. And you're right, of course. Everyone does want to know what Tony Blair thinks, and at all times. I wake up every morning and I think, who wants to hear from me today? And the answer is, of course, always everyone. And so I talk to anyone who will listen, because then I can't hear, well, you know, them. Them? Sorry, Mr Blair, I'm not quite sure what you're saying. Well, I mean the moaning corpse is stood behind you, of course. Oh, there's no one stood behind me, Mr Blair. Of course there is. They're always there. The man with the burned face, staring at me. The mother, cradling the broken body of a child. The teenage boy, balancing on his hands. His lower body a bloody ruin. Blown away by an artillery strike. They're always there. They follow me everywhere, moaning about WMDs. A million dead faces, always watching, judging, crying out in pain. They're in the bathroom mirror when I brush my teeth. For years now, they've watched, waited, calling me to them. What is happening? Did I mention I won three elections? Um, if we could get back to Afghanistan, Mr Blair, you've been quite vocal about the way in which President Biden has managed this withdrawal. You said it was in pursuit of an imbecilic slogan. Yes, of course, and I stand by that. Ending a forever war, it's a meaningless objective. The West needs to have the courage to stand behind its principles. Liberty, democracy, and engineering a case for an imperialistic war that claims a million lives on the back of false and manufactured evidence are all noble aims, and we shouldn't shy away from having the courage to pursue them. Sorry, what was the last one? And the West, of course, should stand up against the spread of radical Islam, unless that radical Islam is funded and supported by Saudi Arabia. My institute can tell you all about it, provided you pay me several hundred thousand pounds to speak for them. I won three elections, don't you know? No, Ahmed, stop it. I'm not coming with you. I'm not walking into the fire. There's definitely no one there. (laughs) You really think so? How peculiar. Maybe it's like my hands. I'm always convinced they're soaking wet, red with blood, and no matter how hard I scrub, I can never get them clean. But Cherry says they're fine. I suppose it's all a matter of perspective. Oh, look at that. The mother and child are on fire again, reaching for me with their burning hands. It's all right. 
I can keep talking. The pauses you see, I pause like this. Keep my voice going. Just to quieten the screams. We're nearly out of time, Mr Blair, but I suspect there's one question I have to ask you. Clearly, you believe we should have committed more long-term to the West's strategic aims in Afghanistan. In that regard, I suppose the only thing to ask you is how you ever saw this conflict coming to an end. End? Nothing ends, child. They're just fire and blood and the gnashing of teeth and the clawing of desperate, grave-soiled hands. And beneath you, as time ticks away and your body withers, there's only the abyss widening a little every day with the terrible laughter from the depths of the pit rising even louder. It knows your days are numbered and one day it will claim you. It laughs because it knows. It knows your bed of mammon will ultimately provide you with nothing but kindling for the fires of eternal damnation. Right. Can I ask, how much am I getting paid for this, by the way? And can I have it in cash so I can wad it up and press it against my ears to muffle the screams? I'll um, have to check with my producer on that one. That's all we have time for. Mr Blair, thank you very much. I'm Joanne Gordon and never meet your heroes, everyone. Reporting for IC News. Amid, did you know I won three elections? Oh great, now he's on fire too. Who wants to hear from me next then? You? Are you going to listen? It doesn't matter. I'm going to talk anyway. But you'll pay me, right? Of course you will. (laughs) 